Hey guys, welcome back to the homestead. I am excited because it's planting day. So this is, we've planted a couple things here, um, but not very many. Um, so I have something really fun that I want to share with you. And that is this year we're going to be attempting a plant sale. Um, it's, <laughs> we're not going to have that many plants, um, but we are going to try to have lots of extra starts to be able to share with our community this year and yeah so <laughs> it's kind of a, a big undertaking because I don't have a huge amount of space so I've put all of these plants out or these pots out in front of me here I have chosen the seeds that I'm going to start today oh sorry I fluffs on my face um I have messed around with the right times to start different seeds in our area. Now, because I am selling starts this year, it changes my time frame just a little bit um, because I need to have plants that are a little bit more mature to be able to get out to people. Um, so I did go ahead and start a few things a little while ago, um, just the petunias and the pansies because those are for more like hanging baskets and they take a little bit more time. So this, um, this planting that I'm going to do today is a little bit more, a little bit sooner than I would normally have started some of this stuff, but most of this stuff is things that I already like to plant. So the last week of January, I like to get eggplant and peppers going celery and onions as well. We already started our onions actually three weeks ago because I'm trying a um, sort of a trial with them and um, I'll let you know how it goes in the end. I'm, <laughs> I'm not convinced it's gonna work. I'm not convinced it's not gonna work, but I'll share that with you maybe in the onion video. We do have an onion chopping video coming up soon so I can tell you Maybe it's more of an onion processing video. Um, so I can tell you uh, if there's any ways to make yourself not cry while cutting onions. Um, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so today I'm basically just planting peppers and I already planted some celery. Oh, no. Can I have one of your paper, a white yeah. one? I don't have any more white ones. Mm -hmm. You have to pick a different color. Okay, okay. And, um, a whole bunch of different herbs and flowers. Now, a lot of flowers and herbs don't have to be started until four to six weeks before your first frost or your last frost of spring. Um, but some of the ones, like I said, I need them to be a little bit more established. Some of them I don't personally need, but I know other people would enjoy. So I want to be able to have those and starting extra starts, not only I mean, yes, we're going to be having some intentionally for sale, but they also make really great bartering tools. And I don't know about you guys, but I have been practicing a little bit with my bartering. I am not very good at it, <laughs> but I want to be better about it. And so I figure if I have extra seeds or seedlings, uh, then I will be able to do that a little bit better. So I'm going to go fill up these trays and then I thought we could just plant together and hang out together. Um, like I said, I already planted a tray of just some peppers and some celery, different kinds of celery. And I'll show you those when they sprout up, when those come. Um, I did a seed starting 101 class today. It was super fun. And we, that's when we planted those. So, um, but we will be we will be doing all of the rest of these fun things together. So I'll show you some of the varieties. It's not going to be super in depth. I just thought we could hang out today and do this. We are preparing for a very cold snap. Oh, I think it's probably, it's setting in, like it's pretty windy today. So setting in tonight and then it's supposed to go for the next few days. So to me, if I can't be outside playing outside and I definitely can't be planting yet, I might as well get to plant in the house. So I'm going to go fill up these pots with my soilless medium. Um, I am actually, oh, that brings me to another piece of a very exciting news that I want to share with you guys. I recently signed up for the Amazon affiliate program. It makes me nervous, but <laughs> I'm very excited about it because I do order quite a few things on Amazon for the garden. So I will leave a link down, an affiliate link in the description for you guys. So you can you can purchase these trays, which are 1020 trays. I'll leave a link for those and these pots and my soilless 
uh, starting medium. And so that way, if you guys would like to do this the same way I am doing it, you can. I forgot. I thought I would tell you real quick what I am using. I am using a soilless seed starting mix from, uh, it's Pro Mix. It's my favorite kind. So like I said, I will link all of these things down in the description box for you on the Amazon affiliate link and full disclosure, if you choose to shop through that, I might earn a small commission, which I am really excited about. I'm trying so hard to come up with various ways of income to be able to support my family, which makes me so happy. Um, and I also get to share my favorite products with you guys. So I think it's kind of a win-win. Um, so I did buy these pots off of Amazon as well to try them out. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> this is why I, this is why I have the crazy plant lady name you guys like I just can't even help myself um <laughs> we're going to be using the Charles Dowding seed starting method um and I've done this before and two years ago I did this and I um ended up with about 500 tomato starts or something like that it was a lot like a lot <laughs> Now, I don't need, nor do I have room to grow that many in my cold North Idaho garden, not even close. I couldn't even give them away by the end. I finally threw the rest of them on the compost after I sold some, traded some, practically begged people to take them. And finally in the end, I knew they couldn't live any longer in the greenhouse. Now, um, I chose, I intentionally picked tinier containers that I can use to start the seeds in and then and then we'll be using them again later when we pot them up to this size so my plan for most of these seeds is to sell them in six packs and so um i actually already bought those and i bought those from amazon too which these are really great for certain veggie starts and whatnot they're really nice and handy and honestly i went with the cheaper ones because they're more pliable so they're easier to get the, the plants out of um so the, the seeds that we're starting today, I'm going to sow them in these pots like really thickly, super close together. So when they all come up, they're gonna be way too crowded. And then we're going to separate them out into their own little pots at when, once they're like nice and, and sort of developed. So usually this, the first or second set of true leaves is kind of what we're aiming for. So I have done this method before. I thought it worked so well. My only issue with it was it, it worked too well, so I ended up with all those tomato plants. Um, now, this time, that's not a problem because I know I'm gonna need way more starts than what I'm even going to start. I'm just gonna go for it, and I'm gonna basically plant as many things as I have room for. I have a feeling I'm already, out, like I'm just doing what I'm doing today, I'm already gonna be out of room, and that's okay. We'll figure it out when it comes to that. We're just, we're just gonna do this as, <laughs> As we, as we go uh, but what this means for me as the crazy plant lady is I get to play with more plants and more dirt and uh, that makes me super happy so we're gonna do it anyway um, okay so again these trays are called 1020 trays they have no holes in the bottom because all of the things we're gonna fit in them have holes in them so I don't have to worry about the trays having holes uh, they are also known as like sprouting trays or fodder trays. You can find them on all kinds of things. So, like I said, I will leave a link though for you so you can just go check them out if you want to. Um, so today, like I said, we're going to start a whole bunch of different things. I was going to use masking tape to label the pots. Hold me to this, you guys. <laughs> Help me be better about my labeling. Um, I'm going to try so hard. So every once in a while, leave it down in a comment for me and say, Esther, have you done your labeling properly? Because I don't care if I have good labels, but people who are buying things from me might care. So that is why I specifically chose individual pots, mostly for my peppers. Remember last year I showed you guys when I was coming out of my cute little hoop house that I somehow always grow only the lemon drop peppers even though last year I didn't even really plant any <laughs> half my plants turned into lemon drop peppers so that's why I have good labels this time so I do not have to worry about which varieties of things I'm growing I'm gonna try really hard to keep track of everything um, I even bought these cute baggies of 
labels. Um, I was expecting these labels to be way bigger, so I'm actually just gonna use these for like starting them and then I'll upgrade later, but <laughs> you know, gotta read the dimensions on Amazon all the time. <laughs> so I'm gonna just plant and, and plant dirt. That's what I'm gonna do. And you're gonna hear the tea because I'm gonna need tea while we're doing this. So first thing, first thing first, I have to put the labels on. So I'm just gonna go through everything that I have chosen and I'm gonna write up all the labels and I'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. Just of me? It's recording. Yeah, I wanted to. You're suspicious to me. I'm not suspicious. Yeah, you can what did I do? Now, some of the seeds that I am trying to grow, like these guys, these cumin, are really old, and I don't know if they're gonna grow or not, but I figure I might as well find out once and for all, because if they're not going to, I either need to order more seed or just get rid of it. I have a leak. Uh, a trick that you can do uh, if you're in a short growing season or somewhere that it's just uh, trickier to grow in, Anything that is a flowering perennial, or at least a lot of things that are flowering perennials, this is a flowering biennial, uh, or is this one? So, yes, this is a biennial, which means that the first year it makes the plant and the second year it makes the flower, when it's a flowering thing, you're after the flower. So you can kind of trick it if you start it super early, like I'm doing in January. Um, sometimes it's enough time for it to be able to grow and flower the first year. So that's what I'm hoping for this year. Now I did try to grow some of these last year, but then when I went on my trip to Tennessee, uh, some of the pots got mixed, missed and uh, didn't get watered. Like when I got back, I forgot about them. So it's not anyone's problem when I was gone. It was when I got back. I, <laughs> I forgot about them and yeah, they died. Just <laughs> so sad. <laughs> so let's try again this year. There's always there's always next year for gardening. Okay, so I just want to remind you guys, I'm, I am intentionally sewing these very close. If you want more information on the method that I am using, it's called the Charles Doubting Method. I'll leave it up on the screen for you. Um, and so it's a specific type of method so that you can save space in your house because it's going to take two to four weeks roughly for these to sprout. So I don't need to have a whole plug tray filled with these little seeds that only need you know, dirt for a little while, um, taking up all that space. So this way I get away with planting a ton more seeds in way less space, and then I can separate them all out. Now you can't do this with any seeds that require, uh, no root disturbance at all. Like you don't want to do that with this, with them. You don't want to do that, this method with those types of plants. Um, but the, the ones that don't care, the clumping varieties or any of that kind of thing, um, they don't mind if you kind of tug at them gently and plant them out um, into their little individual places later. Uh, so this method is, is really, really great for saving space. I love it. So I would love to know what growing zones that you guys are growing in and also what are you starting? Are you starting any seeds yet? Are you growing just for yourself? Or are you growing for friends? I would love to know all those details. It's super fun to be building this community um, with you all and 
well, you know me, I'm a crazy plant lady, so I'm always curious about other people's gardens. I am hoping to do some garden tours this year in other gardens, so if you're local to me and you would like my channel to come and visit your farm, love to do that, especially if you have any tips for growing uh, other people who are growing in cold climates or anything like that. Um, definitely let me know in the comments and uh, I look forward to connecting with you. I am excited. I'm always doing different trials on <laughs> what I'm planting, <laughs> like these foxglove. Technically, you're supposed to plant them in the, the fall and then they come up for the spring. Now, I do have a very tiny patch that sometimes flowers and sometimes doesn't. Um, I don't think I don't think I have enough shade and I don't necessarily have like the perfect garden for fox love, but I keep trying. Um, so we'll see if this works or not. One way that I learned to recognize plants that are coming up in my garden is I would start and I still do it to this day, especially with new things that I haven't grown before. Um, I would start a tiny little bit of it. So just a couple of seeds. So I know what it looks like when it comes up in the garden. Um, so then if I direct sow the rest of the seed, then I know what I'm looking out for. If you don't want to waste seed though, you can always just Google whatever the plant you've grown. So like carnations and then seedling. And most of the time Google images are correct, but not always. <laughs> I'm growing these carnations for my mom because she loves carnations. If I start them soon enough, last time I did these, so it was about two years ago, they bloomed at, after our frost in the fall. Ooh, well, that's a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> that's okay. We'll just tuck them in there. We'd we'll just fine. Um, but I feel like if I would have started them a little bit better and maybe supported them better, they would have been hardier plants. So I'm, I'm going to try. <laughs> it's always, it's always better to go with more and you know, then a lot of stuff will, will be fine and you'll lose a few things and that's okay. I'm, I'm kidding by the way. It's, it's not always better to go more. <laughs> it's, it's usually better to do your best. However, so I can do all of this and all of the ones I've already started and the ones I'm going to be starting because I'm going to be having helpers. So I, I do want you to know that because I have followed different YouTube channels on my journey, um, thinking that they were doing all of the work themselves or building their farm just for their own family's use. And that turned out later to not be true. And so Basically, like the reason I, I want to always fully disclose what I'm doing on this farm because I don't want you to, to come along with me on my journey and think that it's going to work for you unless it, I'm sharing all of those kinds of details. I want to make sure that you know that what I'm doing is requiring help. Sometimes my house is a total disaster. <laughs> um, sometimes... You know, sometimes my children eat peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch and they help me by making their own breakfast by pulling things out of the freezer that I've already made another day. Um, so like there's not, there's not a perfect way to do everything. Okay. So just, it's okay if it, if what I'm doing isn't going to work for you, it, it is a lot of seeds to start and that's okay. It works for me but only because I'm going to have helpers and I am very thankful for my helpers because I love planting all the things. And so I'm excited that I'm going to have people who want to join and be able to do this with me. Um, but you know, on a normal homegrown scale, like this is not that this is not a homegrown scale necessarily. This is a bit more than that. And I'm planting things like cutting flowers and I'm planting things like, um, herbs and all of that kind of thing and getting them going. What's the matter? It looks like it is time for me to put the camera down, finish up my plantings, and make some dinner for my kids. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. If you're enjoying the content, please hit the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. That really helps our channel to grow. And I'm so, so excited. We are just about to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Um, sometimes it takes, sometimes we grow like super fast and sometimes it slows down for a while. And I'm perfectly okay with that because my goal is to share gardening with you guys and help you grow your best gardens yet. So don't forget to learn and grow. I'll see you in the next video. You hope what? I hope you subscribe this video. <laughs> you hope they subscribe this video. Is that enough, Mom? Yep. You did a great job.
that I'm done. Yep, that's perfect.